so good morning we are back this time with something different um, as you know we've been full timing now for about two years <clears throat> before then we lived in a uh, sticks and bricks home we had like a couple acres house and we used to love to grow our own food in terms of you know we had a lot of fruit trees we had a lot of like herb gardens and we had vegetable beds even had chickens and things like that so we really enjoyed that but obviously you kind of get away from that when you go full-time in your RV because we took advantage of the uh, thousand trails membership for our first year and a half where we moved around from campground to campground every three weeks and we Leslie did a little bit of things she loves to grow things um, you know we had a little bit of herbs things like that but nothing major obviously um, with the rising cost of food and we really aren't crazy about all the chemicals they put on vegetables and uh, you know pretty much everything that you buy it's just processed and, and really not the healthiest option so we want to go back to growing some food um, at least to sustain Leslie and I when it comes to maybe vegetables and our herbs and things like that obviously we're still gonna buy other products like milk cheese meats etc etc but um, we truly enjoy the process of growing food we enjoy eating our own grown food so how to do it is now the question um, about six months ago we purchased an RV lot so we're still in Onyx full-time but we purchased an RV lot in Titusville Florida so that now we actually own a lot and we have a quote-unquote home base so with that little RV lot we can do a lot of things so we decided to I'm gonna turn you guys around so we decided to add and purchase some raised garden beds vegetable beds that I am in the process now of putting together these things are really great so we're going to have one sitting here we're going to have another one here that i am now in the process of putting together and if you're interested in these beds i'm going to show you how easy it is to put this together because it really is everything is done with a uh, phillips head screwdriver phillips head screwdriver and very simple uh, we purchased these on ebay and we measured you know we have this great little shed here on our rv lot and two will go side by side right here and just that space alone will allow us to grow quite a bit of vegetables and we have more space here if we need to expand and here's our view of our rv lot so again we don't have much space in terms of acreage but we have enough that we could grow actually a lot of stuff and keep it clean. You know, we obviously don't want to have things in the ground and things like that because we have rules and regulations here in our RV resort we have to maintain. <clears throat> but in an effort to keep it really nice and clean, these garden boxes really, really come in handy. And I think it might be a, uh, a solution to to what we want to achieve in terms of growing food so let me show you guys how easy it is to put one of those together and we'll show you a little bit of the process beep, beep. Road note.
Hi. Welcome back to Road Notes. Welcome. It's a beautiful February, a little too warm, but it's a beautiful February day. Yeah. So I have Perfect. the gardening itch again. It's been a bit, but I have the itch to uh, actually grow vegetables again that are not in these little containers like what we've been doing. So we went on Amazon, we were looking for some space saving ideas because one of the things that we're faced with now it's a little bit different than Claremont was we have um, free roaming deer. We, we never had deer at the house because we had a fenced in yard and we did we have squirrels and we bunnies. Had squirrels and bunnies and, <laughs> and maybe the random possum and, and of course the mice. Yeah. But here we've got deer and uh, rabbits and raccoons. So everything we do has to have a like a uh, cover that we can use, like some deer guard and animal guard. So what we ended up doing was deciding to go upward this time instead of having them in the ground more like what we did in the house. But we went on Amazon and found these beautiful galvanized, what do they call them? Met metal galvanized garden metal beds. garden beds. And they're about three feet tall and we fit them along the width of the shed. So two of them fit really nicely and they're they're not gonna take the afternoon Florida sun, which is kind of important. Some things need direct sun. The problem in Florida is the hotter it gets, the worse the afternoon sun is. There's very few things that really, really thrive in that. And we wanna grow things like lettuce and some of the things that love the sun, but they don't really love that type of sun. So that where it's sitting right now, it's gonna get this filtered sun. And I'm really hopeful that we're gonna get a nice crop. So we're gonna show you what the beds look like and then we're gonna kind of lead you into what we're doing here. And hopefully it's gonna work. So these are the two beds. Um, the nice thing is the RV is far enough, far enough away that there's plenty of room to actually maneuver yourself. But we actually also have enough room if we wanted to add um, another one here or um, smaller ones along this side of the shed. Or there, yeah. Yep, or over there. Obviously, mm -hmm. we don't, you know, we're not trying to attract attention either. We want this to be just mm -hmm. a nice little space. And right now it's 4.30 in the afternoon and you can see that they're completely shaded. So they're gonna get the heat of the afternoon, but they're not gonna get the direct sunlight that some of these things just won't grow very well and it just gets too hot. And then one of the things that we did today, which I've not done before, is we found a, a ponderosa lemon. These grow in pots. So you can have these on your patios in a very small space. Part of your traveling garden. Yep, it could be part of your traveling garden. They grow in regular old pots. Mm -hmm. So this one's ponderosa. It does not, something very important when you're growing citrus, it does not need a pollinator. Pollinators are really important. If you don't have them, you will not get plants that fruit. So in our old house, we had to have some of the citrus because they did require pollinators. When we had these citrus plants, they had to be planted with an X number of distance between each other in order for them to kind of do what they needed to do and cross pollinate to create the fruit. This does not. So as you can see, we've got a lot of flowers already on it. So this is already in a fruit bearing mode this time of year. So we're gonna put him in a pot and then as he gets bigger, we'll just get some wheels, make the pot bigger and he'll be able to move around and he should hopefully start fruiting here in the next month or two. So for this project, we used organic potting mix. And this is two of the bags. They actually had these on special at Lowe's. So we got eight bags for both, for the total of both beds. And I measured it correctly. It's gonna be four bags per bed, it looks like. So. And um, why do we have wheat guard on I, the bottom? I'm trying to keep it from, not only for the water falling out of it and making everything nasty underneath, but it also helps retain some of the nutrients. Okay. So I'm gonna, 
use organic fertilizer in here. I didn't buy manure, um, which we usually will use cow manure as well, uh, because we're doing a, we're gonna, this is going to be a, uh, a companion one. Onions uh, gross very well with certain other things, so I'm gonna try to keep this as simple, and then I'll bring the manure in later. I just wanna see how everything's gonna lay out first. I'm a fan of this. This is the all-purpose plant nutrition. This is Performix Organics from miracle Grow, and I really like this one. I've used this on flowers as well as vegetables, and it seems to work well. You'll also notice that I have a tendency to not wear gloves. I like the dirt on my hands. I do. So before we put the second half of the dirt in, I'm going to go ahead and fertilize this. Um, that way it's not going to burn the roots of everything right out of the gate and then I'm going to mix it up a little bit and then we're going to add the next layer of dirt. Not everybody likes to play in the dirt, but I do. It's This one has some chunky dirt in it, so we're going to get it all mashed up. And now the bed is four bags. And I might need to add a little bit more in these corners, but the cardboard will eventually dissolve but it gives it a little bit of food as it goes so this is a good height to start i started these um two weeks ago they are texas onions and you can buy these at lowe's i don't know if you could buy them at home depot but we found these at lowe's and they come in this huge container and they are easy keepers so what i'm going to do with these is they're going to go around the perimeter i'm going to put them on this end and that end and they help protect some of the companion plants from the bugs. And then we have neem oil for all natural um, know, bug protection, I guess is a good word. So we're going to put these in and then um, probably not do much more with it today until I get a chance to really plan out what's what. Because you want everything to be at different levels of soil so they're not competing for the nutrition. So I have to figure out, I'm going to get these out and then tomorrow I'll figure out the rest. So we've got yellow onions and we've got red onions. So I'm gonna put them alternating. They don't go very far. So they don't need to be that far apart. They don't take up a lot of room. This whole side it will be white onions. Okie doke. So right now I've got eight, nine uh, yellow or red onion. I got eight or nine white onion. And then I've got one dill. And the reason why I put the dill in here, two reasons. One, it likes some of that shade. This one's broken, so I'm going to get it out. Um, it likes the shade, but it's also a companion plant for onions. So they do well in the same bed. So then I've got some leeks, which is also in the onion family. And we've got some baby leeks that we're gonna grow. And then we've got the white onions here and then I still have to plan out this space, which is most likely gonna be carrot and lettuce. So companion planting, is when you put different vegetables or herbs together that have a healthy relationship with each other. When you're dealing with onions, you can go online and see what works well with them. In this case, we're gonna use uh, cabbage, which is bok, the, the bok choy. We've got some spinach, some lettuce, and some carrots. All four of these are acceptable to plant with onions. So we're gonna space them out in the two beds. I'm gonna do um, probably the bok choy and the carrots in one and the lettuce and the spinach in the other. So I found these in a few little markers, chalkboard wood stakes at the Dollar Tree and a marker, chalk marker to go with it. And started labeling all the herbs and things. And it's gonna look really nice in the bed to be labeled up really pretty. and water. We got romaine and spinach, green onion, red onion, yellow onion, 
and then the red onion, yellow onion, leeks, bok choy, carrot, and dill. So let's see how they do. Yesterday I couldn't show you everything because it was stupid windy outside. So we're gonna try this again. So this is our tea and refreshment area with pineapple mint, chamomile, mint, and spearmint. And these are great to just put in water and then of course your tea at night for the chamomile. Instead of using bags, you can use it loose. Over here, we've got our basil, we've got babies, parsley, thyme, oregano. So we're gonna have all this growing. And then down here is our ponderosa lemon. And you can grow these in pots like we were talking about before. And we're gonna move him around and see where he likes it the best for light. Over here, I grew uh, celery from a scrap, and he's starting to root. And then the beds, which are already starting to take shape. Uh, we got, you see them already starting to come alive. The dill likes it. In the kitchen here, these are actually lemon seeds that are starting to grow and I have a second one that I just planted today. Um, we're hopeful that they're gonna keep growing and then we're gonna put them in a bigger pot. This is a succulent that didn't like where he was, but you see they're doing pretty good. Biggest change, unfortunately, was the cat herb garden in here. I had to move everything outside because the magna shade was keeping the light down too much in here. Uh, so in exchange, I planted more green onions and they really, they really like it so and I just planted these from scraps and they're growing so we're using these in our cooking now like this guy is just he's crazy big so eventually this is going to be something else but for right now it does the job of having it and that I'm hoping to put the lemon uh, seeds in here eventually so you can do a lot with a small space just a question of what you like and what you want to try to grow